नमस्कार हम सदगुरु एक्सपर्ट से दैट ह्यूमन इंट्यूशन आर इसेंशली बायोकेमिकल रिस्पॉन्सेज ऑफ आर बॉडी इफ दैट इज सो एन आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस कैन बी पावर्ड टू रिक्रिएट ह्यूमन इमोशंस आर ह्यूमन इंट्यूशन ट्रूली बायोकेमिकल एल्गोरिदम्स और आर दे समथिंग मोर प्रोफाउंड वेल दस ह्यूमन इंटेलिजेंस हैव समथिंग टू डू विद बायोकेमिकल activity that's happening in our system absolutely well when you know today that you being mentally balanced or imbalanced you being stable or unstable you being clear or unclear in your mind has a chemical basis to it or even you being happy or unhappy loving or not loving joyful or miserable all has chemical basis one way to understand this is it is all a question of intelligence right now as you sit here or wherever you sit whether you make this experience of sitting here beautiful or ugly is a matter of intelligence and it is also a matter of chemistry they are not different it is completely wrong to understand intelligence as thought thought is just one small expression of intelligence this is a folly that modern societies have made because the modern education system has made people believe that thought is the only form of intelligence if thought is the only form of intelligence you will naturally understand that accumulation of data analyzing data and projecting this data according to your analysis is intelligence well this is a process that any machine can do this you're beginning to understand now that even the most complex thought that you think is phenomenal today your computer can do it without effort you see a simple calculator can do more mathematics than your teacher can do your computer can do much more mathematics than any anybody can any mathematician can do so obviously what you thought is a very difficult intellectual process is being processed by a machine far more easily than you can imagine now people argue but mathematics is one thing literature is a different thing music is a different thing well i am telling you whether it's literature or music which are considered more uh what to say outpouring of human heart even this can be done by a machine well we have still not built machines good enough to do that maybe but you will see in the next 25 50 years time maybe i don't know how long but it will inevitably happen you can't make out or probably it will be more perfect so this about intuition first thing to understand about intuition is intuition is not a different level of intelligence intuition is just simply a different level of computing that is <clears throat> let us say let me make it very simplistic for you just for the sake of understanding right now let's say you you had a child or you had a an infant who has grown up just inside a room never seen outside suddenly you bring him out and show him this tree he you know what he is doing he is gathering data color form the way it moves the way it is he is just taking up data through his sense organs let him watch this tree for a few minutes let's say he has grown up after some time and uh, you ask him to let's say depict a tree most probably he will depict it uh, nearly 90% right but 
Now, the process of assimilating the tree in his mind is not logical. He is not saying the leaf is five centimeters by seven centimeters, the color is this kind of green, which is a combination of that, that and that. No, there is no logical assimilation, it's intuitive. Simply just like that, the picture comes to his mind. Because all the data is there, processed and jumps all the steps of one, two, three, four and just gets there. So intuition is just that your computing is in such a way that you don't go through the logical process every time. So intuitive means your computing is skipping the logical steps and arriving at the answer, which is definitely a more sensible way to conduct your life. Is this just a biochemical algorithm? Well, uh, I would say a hundred percent yes. So, when we say biochemical algorithm, it is in a constant flux, you can set it the way you want. By genetics, by culture, by external influences, it's set one way. But if you are conscious, you can set it in another way. So, is it just biochemical algorithms? When you say it is just, you are thinking that, am I just a mechanical process? Well, there is a mechanism. The question is whether this mechanism is conducted consciously or not. Right now, there is an intellect, there is an intuitive dimension, and there are deeper levels of intelligence, which is the basis of the making of the creation itself, the very source of creation. That intelligence is also embedded within you. The question is only at what level of access are you? Hey, everybody has an arm like this, all right? Now, can everybody use their arm the same way? No. Different people use it different ways. Somebody is a ball player, he uses it one way. Somebody is a writer, he uses it another way. Somebody is an artist, he uses it another way. Somebody is a yogi, he uses it another way <laughs> Because you have figured out certain aspects of life, somebody else has figured out another aspect of life. Depending upon how you apply yourself, accordingly, your biochemical algorithm is constantly changing. It is not a set process. Well, there are certain settings, because otherwise you won't have a starting place. Like I already said, genetics, cultural influences, Sanskriti, that is generations of learning that's happened uh, within you, all these things put together, there is a certain algorithm, but it is not set, it is fluid. You can change it every moment of your life. So your intuition, what kind of intuition do you have? People are just doing guesswork all the time and thinking it's intuition. No, if you want to develop intuition, First thing is, you must learn how to simply sit here, fully alert and not thinking about anything. Somebody was asking me, Sadhguru, when you're riding, what are you thinking about? Why the hell am I thinking about anything? I'm just riding. That's why I'm still alive <laughs> Because the kind of risks that I've taken on two wheels, I'm still alive because I don't think a damn thing. If you know how to simply sit here, alert but unthinking, oh, how is that possible? I'm asking, how is it possible for you to think when so much is happening out here? If you pay attention, you will not think. So the most important aspect of life is your attention, not your thoughts. This is what a child who saw the tree for the first time did attention. If your attention is on all the time, without any kind of judgments about what is this, what is that, simply attention, not thought, just attention, you will naturally become intuitive. Human attention can open up any door in the universe, but 
the attention should become free from judgmental process. That means, from the limited data that you gathered, you should not go on judging everything around you. Because even if you think you know everything, the data that you have gathered is very, very limited. If you observe this tree for one whole year, the entire process of it dropping leaves and putting back new leaves and everything, still I am telling you, you do not even know a small percentage of what the tree is. If you want to understand the biochemical algorithm of the tree, we do not know how long it will take for you to grasp that. So this is a much, much more complex mechanism than the tree. So definitely this, if you spend a lifetime paying attention to this, still what you know is very little. But if as you become more and more conscious, you determine the biochemical algorithms. That means you determine the nature of the experience. But now the question was, can we build machines like this? Yes, we can. As we can build machines which can do math for us, we can build machines which will write stories for us, we can build machines which will make music for us, we can build machines which are intuitive in nature. So, uh, this is a, a very valid question. This is a question that needs to be looked at more profoundly than just talking about intuition or emotion, it needs to be looked at as a life process. Because life process is such, there is no separation between intelligence, intuition, thought, uh, beat of the heart, function of the liver, function of the kidney, or what the spleen is doing, what the brain is doing, there is no differentiation. It is one seamless function. To grasp it that way is most important. Only then you will know life, only then you will experience life to its fullest. Only then you will find that you will be speechless about life <laughs> because there is no word. The word is there. Is there a word? Is there a vocabulary to describe a phenomena like this? There is no word to describe what is life, what is it about? There is no conclusion. When there is no word, there is no conclusion. When there is no conclusion, there is no death. This is the way of liberation. I know you asked a simple question about whether machines can become like this or not. Machines can become everything that you are. Can do everything that you can do, probably better than you. As you know, they are doing things better than you. Only thing is, they cannot become consciousness. Well, some people are saying we will build consciousness into a machine. That's not going to happen because that's life. What you call as consciousness is the essence of life, that which cannot be described, for that which we don't have a word to say what it is, that which is that indescribable force which makes everything happen. That will not happen in a machine, one hundred percent. So, in today's technological world, we know that artificial intelligence and robotics are taking over. Uh, those are the cutting-edge technologies. So, what is your take on the interaction of such technologies with the uh, intersection of such technologies and ancient practices such as meditations and yoga? Are you sure I am real? <laughs> Because last year and a half, uh, they've been inviting me to speak in uh, all sorts of artificial intelligence conferences in the world. I was just surprised, why are they asking me to come and speak about artificial intelligence? Because I am not an expert in the field, nor am I an artificial intelligence <laughs> So I asked them in one of the conferences, it was in St. Petersburg, I said, why are you guys inviting me to all these artificial inter intelligence conferences? I'm a natural intelligence, not an artificial intelligence <laughs> They said, uh, the problem is, what are we going to do? We're going to lose our jobs, 
These are all professors in big universities in MIT and in Harvard and these kind of places. They are asking me, what are we going to do in another ten years' time? Because everything that we know, everything that was sacred till now, suddenly is going to be there on a little gadget. <laughs> you must understand this, what artificial intelligence means is, accumulation of information, analyzing it and projecting it the way you want at a given moment, will no more be considered as a valuable thing in human faculty. Because a simple gadget will do it much better than any human being. Already that Google lady is looking smarter than any of you, isn't it? She looks smarter than me, it's okay, I'm not educated, but you guys <laughs> She's looking smarter than any of us or no? Anything you ask without batting an eyelid, she tells us. So, it's going to that place where intellectually everything that you perform will look stupid or meaningless. This happened to me when I was uh, about thirteen years of age, I think, thirteen or fourteen, thirteen I think. For the first time I saw a flatbed calculator, this Panasonic calculator, you know. At that time it was hundred, hundred and ten rupees, very expensive. <laughs> you drink a coffee for more than that today. But hundred and ten rupees, Panasonic, Sony was one twenty-five, so we buy the cheaper one, hundred and ten rupees Panasonic. And they show me this, I didn't… I never bought them. Somebody brought one and they showed me, tuk, 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 results. Then first thought that came to me is, why the hell am I wasting my life in the mathematics classes? <laughs> I said, all I need is this, I don't have to go to the math class. Whatever question you ask, tuk, 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 a hundred rupee thing can tell you why this torture for ten years, going through this arithmetics and mathematics and all kinds of things. It can even do sine theta, cos theta, whatever nonsense you want. Then only I thought, we must make a big machine which does all this rubbish so that I don't have to go to school. At last, the dream is coming true. <laughs> In the next ten, fifteen years, the education as you know it, professions as you know it today will become meaningless because right now they have created these machines. Right now we are still kind of obsessed with creating machines which look like us, which is unnecessarily complicating. It can be a square box which walks everywhere and does everything we do, it's too insulting for human intelligence. So we are still making it look like a human being. If something is intelligent, it must look human in our mind. But slowly, for the sake of economics, somebody will make one tall box which does everything that you do, okay? <laughs> Time is coming for that. So once this happens, Many, many things that we are spending years on learning will be meaningless. Now they built a thing, I was meeting this one top real estate guy in Russia. They are designing something that if a customer comes and says, what kind of house I want, what is my aesthetics, what is my culture, what I like, how it should be and what's my budget. A machine designs a complete house ten different alternatives that you want, including paintings, hangings in the wall, the furniture, the works. Now they're saying in another five to seven years, they're saying it can even print the house and build it. So just imagine the design guys <laughs> So many of you will be out of your occasion unless you do something that a damn machine cannot do. All of you should gear yourself for this now. You must be able to do something beyond your intellect. Human being has many layers of intellect, uh, intelligence. Intellect is only a small part of it. Right now our education system is completely dedicated to intellectual development of the human being and we think that's the grandest way to live. No, it is not. We can explore that if we have the time. But in the yogic way of looking at things, we look at human intelligence as sixteen parts. If you explore other dimensions of intelligence, only then you will be relevant when everything intellectual… Intellectual means your intellect cannot function without 
accumulated data, yes or no? Hello? Your intellect cannot function without accumulated data, is that so? Now whatever is data assimilation, analysis and execution of that analysis, a machine will do better than you. A human being can always make mistakes, can always fudge information, but a machine is clear-cut, it will simply do those things. So everything that you can do intellectually will be meaningless in another ten to fifteen years' time. Maybe in India it will take twenty to twenty-five years' time, but inevitably it's going to happen. So you must be equipped with something beyond your intellect. When I say beyond your intellect, there are many ways to look at it. I will make a simplistic uh, example. Simplistic because if we go into more sophisticated examples, we'll have to do a lot of exploration. We don't have that kind of time today. For example, what did you eat for lunch? Maggie. You are on Maggie? Can't you somebody take care of his nourishment? He's a Maggie. <laughs> okay, even if you eat the noodle, a noodle doesn't look like him, doesn't feel like him, nothing. But this noodle he eats, within three, four hours' time, this Maggie noodle has become a human being, isn't it? It's become part of the system. So you are manufacturing such a complex machine with Maggi noodles <laughs> This is like a 3D printer. You put Maggi noodles into it. No, I am not made of Maggi noodles, okay? I eat better than that. But you put such chapati into this, this becomes a human body. This is the most sophisticated machine on the planet. You're manufacturing this with whatever food that you eat. And the food that you eat is just the soil that you walk upon, yes or no? And it stands up. Isn't this a 3D printer? Hello? Does that intelligence exist within you or not? Not even in your brain, in your gut? It does. It does. So if only you found conscious access to this dimension of intelligence, you would live magically, isn't it? Then artificial intelligence won't disturb you, you will be very happy because all the menial jobs if the machines do, what a wonderful world, I'm looking forward to that. Ladies and gentlemen, in this age of rapid technological advancement and the growth of artificial intelligence, it's natural to wonder about the impact of AI on humanity. We've delved into the potential, the challenges, and the blurred lines between machines and humans. It's an intriguing journey into the future. The essence of being human is something profoundly unique, something that might be unquantifiable, unprogrammable. While AI and machines continue to evolve, there's a depth to human experience, consciousness, and emotion that remains distinct. The future with AI is promising and challenging. Rather than fearing it, we must strive to harness its potential for the betterment of society. It's our responsibility to ensure that AI enhances our lives, makes us more efficient, and enables us to explore the depths of our humanity. Whether we consider AI a boon or a bane, its role in our lives is undeniable. We should approach it with wisdom, ensuring that it serves us rather than dominates us. Remember, we are the creators and it's our consciousness that defines the path of AI. As we move forward, let's embrace this new era with a sense of curiosity, responsibility and optimism. Together, we can shape a future where human potential is not overshadowed by technology but amplified by it. Thank you for joining us and we look forward to continuing this remarkable journey of exploration and discovery. Namaskaram